likewise the filter will get wet. If you withdraw too much fluid into the syringe, place the vial back on the work surface, tilting it slightly so that the filter is facing directly upward. Inject the excess volume slowly back into the vial to avoid wetting the filter. Once you have withdrawn the correct volume of fluid, unscrew the syringe. When detaching the filled syringe from the chemotherapy dispensing pin, firmly hold the vial at a 45 degree angle and hold the syringe barrel with the tip upward. Draw the fluid up from the tip of the syringe to prevent the antineoplastic solution from running onto your fingers. Attach a needle to the syringe to avoid spraying the HEPA filter when expelling any air bubbles. Recap the dispensing pin without contaminating it. The vial can then be kept or discarded with the pin still attached. Before removing air bubbles, draw about 2 cm of air into the syringe so that the antineoplastic fluid does not leak into the needle guard. Use the one large air bubble to catch all the smaller bubbles. Then tap the syringe barrel to free the bubble from the rubber of the plunger. Pull down gently on the plunger and then push up slowly without allowing the fluid beyond the transparent part of the needle. If the amount of fluid in the syringe is insufficient, withdraw the missing volume. If you have withdrawn too much fluid, the surplus must be injected back into the original vial. Procedure for attaching a tubing, suggested technique. In preparing an antineoplastic, you may attach the tubing before injecting the product into the solution. This way you avoid all contact with the product when removing air from the tubing. Disinfect the injection port of the solution bag. Attach a needle to the end of the tubing. Insert this needle in the solution bag. Install the clamp about 45 centimeters from the flow chamber. This way there will be no leaking of solution into the biological safety cabinet when you attach the tubing and it will be easier for the nurse to handle the clamp. When inserting the spike, make sure you do not come into contact with the top part of the flanges since it becomes contaminated by the solution. Grasp the injection port of the tubing firmly, placing your fingers above the plastic ring. Remove the plastic protective covering, taking care not to contaminate the tubing injection port and the spike. Push the spike in deeply, rotating it to prevent any solution from escaping. Pinch and then release the flow chamber to bring the fluid slightly below the indicator line, which allows the nurse to control the infusion rate. Eliminate air bubbles and form a head of fluid. Gradually move the fluid towards the solution bag by unclamping the tubing. Make sure there is no air trapped under the clamp. Slow the flow close to the Y injection ports to completely fill them with fluid while flicking with your fingers above the Y. Clamp the tubing if necessary to move any remaining air bubbles up to the fluid head. Let the fluid flow into the needle and make a last check to ensure there are no air bubbles in the tubing. Withdraw and cap the needle. Replace the needle with the protective cover of the end of the tubing or a sterile cover depending on the protocol at your hospital. Have the tubing and the product checked by the pharmacist. To inject the product into the solution, place it on the work surface. Disinfect the injection port.
Inject the anti-neoplastic. Discard the syringe without capping it. Wipe the injection port with an alcohol swab. Let the medication circulate gently throughout the solution. Test the integrity of the bag by pressing gently on it. Carefully wipe the tubing in the solution bag with an alcohol-soaked sterile gauze. Then wipe the part that is most likely to be contaminated by the antineoplastic, the injection port of the solution bag. Last, place the solution bag on a tray. Label the bag, taking care not to cover the volume and type of solution marked on the bag. Roll up the tubing for easy transport and place the solution bag in a sealed bag and then in a puncture-proof container marked with the cytotoxic symbol. Procedure for reconstituting a powder in a vented vial with a hydrophobic filter. Begin the procedure by drawing up the diluent into a syringe. Pull back the plunger of the syringe before attaching the filter so as not to damage the filter by accidental air pressure. Unpack the filter, grasping the sides of the disc firmly so it does not fall out of the package. Remove the cap from the venting syringe and attach the filter without taking it out of the package to prevent contamination. Once the filter is attached to the syringe, remove the packaging. Attach a small gauge needle to the filter. Loosen the antineoplastic powder and disinfect the stopper. Place the point of the venting needle at the 3 o'clock position on the edge of the rubber stopper. Push the needle in at a 45 degree angle. Turn the vial so that the venting needle is at the 12 o'clock position. Before reconstitution, pull back this needle so that it never dips into the solution. Place the point of the needle of the diluent syringe at the 3 o'clock position on the outer edge of the rubber stopper at a 45 degree angle and then push the needle in at a 90 degree angle under the venting needle. This position facilitates a rotary motion during reconstitution so powder sticking to the sides of the vial can be dissolved. Using a rotary motion, slowly inject the diluent, dislodging the powder from the base of the vial first then sliding the fluid down the side of the vial and ending in the center. During the reconstitution, make sure that the diluent needle stays out of the solution. Take care not to inject the diluent too rapidly, as this may generate foam, which can back up into the venting needle and block the hydrophobic filter. Once the fluid is injected, withdraw the diluent syringe first, as it is heavier.
otherwise the vial might tip over. To do this, draw a little air into the syringe before removing it. It is very important to maintain pressure on the plunger the entire time while removing the syringe. Discard the diluent syringe without recapping it. Withdraw the vent and cap it. Now all you have to do is agitate the solution. For products that cannot be agitated, wipe the stopper with an alcohol swab and roll the vial between your fingers at a 45 degree angle. For other products, place an alcohol swab on the vial and agitate the vial with a circular motion to prevent leaks through the stopper. Check that complete dissolution has been achieved before making any withdrawals. The solution should not contain any foam or undissolved particles. The negative pressure technique is used to reconstitute antineoplastic products when the devices demonstrated earlier are not available. Begin by withdrawing the diluent. Loosen the antineoplastic powder and then disinfect the stopper. Remove the needle guard. Stick the needle in the center of the rubber stopper at a 45 degree angle, bevel side up, and then bring the syringe into an upright position at a 90 degree angle to the top of the vial. Tilt the vial syringe assembly at a 30 degree angle to the work surface. Firmly grasp the vial syringe assembly in your dominant hand and draw air into the syringe by pulling on the plunger end plate. Hold the barrel of the syringe firmly downward while drawing in air, otherwise the needle might be expelled from the vial, exposing you to antineoplastic aerosols. Now inject a small amount of fluid, preferably by letting it flow into the vial or by pushing on the plunger without going below the initial volume of the syringe. Pushing the plunger below this volume could create overpressure in the vial, with the risk of exposing the handler to antineoplastic aerosols. Slowly inject the fluid, tilting the syringe to direct the jet to the base of the vial and then along the sides. End by diluting the powder in the center of the vial with a circular motion. Gradually pull the needle up to prevent the bevel from dipping into the solution. Repeat these two steps until the diluent is completely injected into the vial and the syringe contains a volume of air at least equivalent to the volume of diluent. Withdraw the needle. To do this, you must first clear all fluid from the needle, bevel side up. Tilt the vial slightly to clear the needle from the drug. Draw in a little air by pulling on the plunger with your index finger and keeping it extended until the needle is completely removed. This prevents leaking of the fluid. Place an alcohol swab on the vial and agitate the vial with a circular motion to prevent leakage through the stopper. Before any withdrawals, leave the vial at rest until the product is completely dissolved and the foam generated by the agitation has disappeared. Procedure for withdrawing a solution using negative pressure. Check that the bevel is properly aligned with the graduation to facilitate volume reading during the withdrawal from the vial. Start by disinfecting the rubber stopper of the vial with an alcohol swab. In our example, we will withdraw 10 milliliters of solution. Hold the syringe in a vertical position and draw in a volume of air. To